Hi, I'm Jason. And I'm Vivian. And this is Burger of the Week. Each week we discuss an episode of the Fox animated series Bob's Burgers, and we create a themed burger based on the episode. This week we're talking about Season 2, Episode 8, Bad Tina. This episode was written by Holly Schlesinger and directed by Jennifer Coyle, and it aired May 13th, 2012. The store next door was Valley of the Doilies, and the exterminator van was the Vermin Surgeon. Now this one I don't like, because surgeons generally make things better. Right, yeah, it's not the greatest. It's a great play on words. It sounds good. We had two burgers of the day. We had the Sit and Spinach Burger. That's cute, Sit and Spin. Is that like a spin class or something? No, it's like a Sit and Spin. Isn't it a kid's thing? I think it's like a kid's toy. Okay. Maybe you just sit your kid in it and then you spin them around, right? And you walk That's away a good and thing. leave them? Yeah. And you come back to a pile of vomit? <laughs> sure. Why not? We have the Sweaty Palms Burger which comes with hearts of palm. Now, I don't know what that is. So, hearts of palm are a vegetable harvested from the inner core and growing bud of certain palm trees. They kind of look like bananas, Mm -hmm. except completely straight. I'm certain that they taste nothing like bananas, though. Probably not. I've never had them in my life, so I can't attest to that. It's still kind of a weird burger name. Sweaty Palms. I don't really want to go to a restaurant and order the Sweaty Palm Burger. No, it's not very appealing. Although, I know we've had some pretty unappealing burger names. This is true. I mean, our first episode was called Corpse Pride. That's fair. (laughs) So we all make mistakes. It's okay, Bob. In this episode, we get our first appearance of Tammy. Yay. Who is voiced by Jenny Slate. I know her best as Mona Lisa Saperstein on Parks and Rec. And also from the publicity skits on The Kroll Show. But she's a comedian. She's been in a lot of things. And she does a lot of voice work, too. And this is also the first appearance of Miss Jacobson, who isn't a really big guest star or anything. Um, but she is voiced by Melissa Bardengalski, who voiced Melissa on Home Movies. So she's worked a lot with this crowd before. Mm-hmm. So it is the first appearance of Tammy. Though she does look a little bit different. Her yeah. hair is brown instead of blonde. Mm-hmm. And apparently she was supposed to be blonde, but for some reason they changed it for this one episode and then decided after that, no, 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 she should have been blonde. It's a little weird. Yeah. But, I mean, it's not the first time this stuff has happened in animated shows. The first season of The Simpsons, Mr. Burns' sidekick, Waylon Smithers, was black. What? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, but that's like a huge change. You just change that person's race. Yep. Not hair color. Mm -hmm. Because this can be very easily explained by Tammy decided that when she got to this new school, she wanted to reinvent herself and then dyed her hair blonde. Yeah, Smithers didn't just get a skin pigment treatment. Yeah, (laughs) that's weird. It's a little bizarre that they didn't just change the character entirely. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, this guy isn't doing great for whatever reason, so we're just going to change it to a different character. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. Now I kind of want to go watch that. (laughs) Anyway. All right, so let's get started. We open on Tina writing erotic friend fiction about Jimmy Jr. Pesto and zombies. The zombie thing again. Mm -hmm. The Vultures see an ad on TV for cake at the Wharf Arts Center. At school, Tina is welcoming a new student named Tammy to Wagstaff. Wharf Arts. Woo! (laughs) So we've got Tina's weird obsession. It's still a thing. Yep. She hasn't gotten over it, grown up. No, she's still into zombies. And we last heard about her semi-sexual zombie dream back in Season 1, Episode 2, Crawl Space. This was a long time ago. Yeah. And this will continue. Oh, yeah. It does not <laughs> stop with Tina. I did pause to see what all the other erotic fan fiction was, and there was Twilight... Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, Cinderella, Simpsons. Okay, so mm-hmm. maybe we've got Mr. Burns and Mr. Smithers. Who knows? Gossip Girl, Sesame Street. Oh, Tina! Which is, no, don't don't do that, please. ER, Bones. 
what? ER? Yeah. That's fantastic. Which is weird because Tina would not watch ER. There's no way. She's too young for that. Yeah. Not that there's like explicit stuff, I guess, in the show. I haven't really watched it, but it just seems like too old of a show for her to be watching. Mm-hmm. Um, Bones, Law and Order, 60 Minutes, <laughs> because, you know, everyone's <laughs> sexy on that show. Uh, Garfield, 90210, which Garfield, like what? Garfield slash lasagna? That's like pretty much the biggest ship. Garfield and Odie. Ew. Because you can't do Garfield and John because that's just bestiality. Yeah, the gross. No. Although that Although, doesn't yeah, stop it doesn't people. Stop Tina. But Garfield and Odie? No, no. Odie's like, uh, he's like a proto human. He's like really dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I just wouldn't like that. Anyway. 90210, The Good Wife, and Muppets. Okay. So that's that's like a big range of things. Oh, yeah. Those she are doesn't... adult shows, like Law and Order, mm-hmm. and then Garfield. Sesame Street. She's... She's, she's all you know, inclusive. Yeah. Yeah. You can't, uh, you can't nail her down. She doesn't stick to one genre. mm So I got a little mad at Tina right at the beginning of this episode. Of when course. she's showing Tammy around, and she shows her this her little... spy hole. Yeah, the spy hole. Okay, have we not had We've this had conversation? We had this conversation when she was yeah. in the crawl space. Because exactly. Because that was episode two, crawl space. Ugh. She was impersonating her dad, stuck in the crawl space, so she was spying in the boys' locker room. So this is not new for Tina. No, She's she finding has... new ways to spy on boys. I don't like it. She hasn't learned. Of course she not. She should learn her damn lesson. Anyway, it's not cool to do this. Don't encourage it. I do like Tammy's style. It reminds me a lot of Deb from Napoleon Dynamite, but kind of mixed with the confidence and crass of Alana from Broad City. Okay. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Definitely. Did you ever have a friend or somebody like Tammy in school? They thought they had the best style and they were the funniest and they were the cutest and everybody else was kind of not as good. Um, I think I had some friends like that, but usually they were in elementary school and they were not people that I was friends with for very long Hmm. Um, because I usually got tired of their attitude and then we'd stop hanging out. Yeah, it gets kind of old. Yeah, it really does. I wouldn't want to be friends with her for, for, well, at all. (laughs) (laughs) What about you? Did you have friends like this? No. No? Oh, that's good. Yeah. (laughs) I think I knew some girls who were like that in high school. Yeah. But not like just casual acquaintances, like somebody you'd see in the hall and know who they are. Because everybody knows them. Exactly. Because they're popular. Right. And amazing. And the best. But at the same ever. time, they thought they were, but a lot of people knew they weren't. They right. just They couldn't see that they weren't. Mm-hmm. They weren't the the king or queen of fashion and yeah. Mm-hmm. Tina and Tammy get detention for spying in the boys' locker room. They're joined by Jimmy Jr. and Zeke, and the girls attempt to flirt. Back at the restaurant, Tina's behaving badly due to Tammy's influence. Bob and Linda go to see Cake, leaving Tina to babysit her younger siblings. I don't like Linda this whole episode. No! She's so mean. She's aggressive. She's She yells a lot. She says, what the hell, like a bunch of times. She seems very uncharacteristic, in my opinion, this whole really? episode. She's very aggressive. I feel like Bob and Linda are very realistic in this episode. I think this, to me, like, this is real, really real, because my mom would have acted this way. Real as in, like, what parents would actually do. Yes. Versus realistically what Bob and Linda do. Right. I think at first they're fine, but then when Tina says don't have a crap attack, that's when Linda gets really upset. Mm -hmm. Um, To me, it feels normal, feels real that she would just get angry because she doesn't understand why Tina's acting this way because Tina's never like this. Right. And personally, if if I had said this to my mom, she would have flipped out. Don't have a crap attack? Yes. Oh, yeah. If I had said it with that amount of attitude, for sure. <laughs> you wouldn't have just burst out laughing? No, no, no. If I was, like, angry and I was like, Ugh, Mom, don't have a crap attack. She would have gotten mad at me yeah. for giving her attitude, for sure. Because I used to say your point whenever when I was a teenager. Oh. You know? So my mom would say something and it'd be like, 
your point or <laughs> what's your point you know that was all the time rebellious phase yeah apparently oh my parents hated it they tell me to stop saying it all the time and i think my mom just flipped out on me once and was like if you say that again you are super grounded like not a little grounded super grounded <laughs> so your point yeah, no, I really had the sassy phase. Point being? <laughs> See, that's exactly what I would do. It was probably really annoying. I feel bad for my mom in retrospect. <laughs> yeah. Did you not have those, like, a sassy phase? You said, like, horrible stuff to your mom? I don't think so. Oh, man. You're such a good child. Boring. <laughs> or I was just too scared of her. Oh, that's sad. <laughs> I do like that Tina writes more erotic friend fiction where she's the baddest girl in school. Because that's kind of cute. Like, I remember having daydreams about getting the boy I liked. Or the the attention of the boy that I liked by, you know, being super cool and, like, (laughs) being a little intimidating. Except that's not my personality at all. Mm -hmm. So, (laughs) did you ever have, like, daydreams wishing you were, like, Mr. Cool, Mr. Absolutely. Like, the bad boy of the school? Wishing that... I was more memorable. Oh, Jason, you're very <laughs> memorable. I doubt half the people in my class remember who I was. Well, whatever. We had dumb. a big high school. Yeah, okay. If you had been at my school, I would have remembered you. I would have been the cool kid. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's the attitude right there. <laughs> yeah, apparently. So, okay. <laughs> it wasn't a phase. It's just lifelong. Um, I like all of Tammy's, I'll call them Tammyisms. Oh. All the witty things she says. Like, oh, you're giving me, this tour's giving me a snorgasm. Don't be such a boob punch. Yeah. <laughs> she says some really great ones. And she- then Tina's got a really good one. When her, when Linda's talking to her and asking her if she he- hears her. And she says, yes, I wear glasses, not hearing aids, mom. That is a great comeback. That's Damn. a fantastic comeback. Damn, get the number for the nearest burn unit, okay? Yep. <laughs> That's harsh. Oh my goodness, you even wrote that down. Yeah, I did. <laughs> of course I did. I gotta write down my witty things. <laughs> did you have any friends who were bad influences that your parents told you were bad influences and not to hang out with them? Yes. Yes, I did. But, um... It wasn't usually, oh, you shouldn't hang out with them. It was more like, I disapprove of this thing that your friend said. So It wasn't, I disapprove of your friend. Not in general. Huh. Um, Most of my friends were pretty good and pretty well, like, known by my parents because we were friends for long enough. Uh, there were a few of them that they didn't really like, but they didn't say much. Um, but I do recall one particular experience where I was in the car with my parents and my then best friend in elementary school, and she made a sexual joke in the car. And my dad didn't think it was funny at all because I was, you know, fairly young at that point. Mm -hmm. So afterwards, when we got home, he was like, maybe you should spend less time with her if that's the way she acts. <laughs> he was very irritated by the whole thing. Do you remember thing. the joke? Yeah, it was like the stupid uh uh Ivana Hump something joke from like Austin Powers. So it was something about I want to hump you type of joke. Yeah, it was really dumb, mm-hmm. but my dad was furious at the time. <laughs> my dad's very like puritanical when it comes to sex like he's not gonna talk to anybody about it ever so (laughs) yeah well at least not to me which is fine don't talk to me about it i'm good (laughs) what about you did you have friends where your mom just didn't want you to hang out with them at all yeah 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 really oh i know this one was it mitch yeah (laughs) it definitely was my mom didn't want me to hang out with one of my best friends and I still did, because he was my best friend. And I think it was just, a, a, I don't know whether it was a phase that he was going through or she was going through where she couldn't stand how much he was into violent imagery and guns and violent video games. And so she just said, I don't want you to hang out with him. Did you guys get into fights over it? Like, because you my kept mom? hanging out with him? Yeah. I don't think he came over for a while, and I don't think I went over to his place for a while. Mm. 
But you saw but it. But we cool. still continued to be friends, and eventually she either forgot about it or got over it. Yeah. But. Okay. Yeah. Tina invites Tammy over, choosing to ignore her parents' rules. Tammy discovers Tina's erotic friend fiction, and she insists they have Jimmy Jr. and Zeke over. The foursome drink margarita mix and have a short-lived dance party. Once the others leave, Jean and Louise blackmail their sister. Short-lived dance party is... Super short-lived. It's not even the length of a song. No. (laughs) On the FM radio. Ooh. That's some bad boy music. You know it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I really love Jean and Louise watching from the closet. It's really cute. Seems like something siblings would definitely do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, my brother used to have friends over, and when I was very young, I would sometimes sit outside of the door and, like, have it just open a little bit, just so I could hear what they were saying. Yeah. Because it was like, ooh, they're four years older than me. Like, they must be talking about something interesting. Yeah. Most of the time, they were just playing video games, and it was boring. But, It doesn't yeah. matter, because you're intrigued by the older age group, and, yeah. you know, what, are they, what do older people talk about? Yeah. What kind of interesting things go on in school, or... With their social lives. Yeah. I never saw anything scandalous. So, you know. Me and my friends did the same with their siblings. Like, mm-hmm. if they were on the phone or had a friend over, we would either spy on them or listen in or, yeah. you know, you'd pick up the phone on the other end trying to listen in and oh, not breathe and just be like. Yeah. Definitely did that a few times. And then I would like say something stupid and hang up the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Tina's makeover is really tragic. It's, like, super bad. And I keep noticing that damn surprise noise now. <laughs> it's in this episode a lot. Oh, I know. It's it's there when Tammy reveals the margarita mix, and it was there earlier when Tina said, don't have a crap attack, and it's still kind of bugging me. Yeah. It's not going to go away. No, I know it's it. definitely I know not. It. Um, All the way up to current season seven. Oh, goodness. I do recall days of drinking with my friends in high school and watching others really play up their buzz. It's kind of cringeworthy to watch this scene, remembering those moments when I was cringeworthy. Uh, I remember a particular moment where I went to a friend's house and we were going to have a bonfire and we were going to have a few drinks. And we had told our parents beforehand because... My friend's parents had to go buy booze for us to have, right? Wow. Like, who else was going to buy it for us? Um, at the time my brother wasn't living at home. So they went out and got us like coolers, you know, Mike's hard lemonade, that kind of stuff, smeared off ice. And one of my friends came over with a note from her mom that said, so-and-so can have two and a half coolers. Wow. (laughs) And it was like, just so infantile. Now that I think of it, it's just really sad. Do you think their parents were just sitting around the table like, how many drinks should we let our daughter have? Not three. Is three three's no, three is too many. Two? <laughs> no, we want her to have a good time. So let's let's crank it up to two and a half. Two and a half. Yeah, it was Any ridiculous. more and it will be out of control. Any less and she'll be a buzzkill. <laughs> Apparently. So, wow. So I remember this particular friend being like, do you want to share one of them with me? Because she was like, I can only have two and I a half. Because I can't have more. No. Because I can't have two and a half. And I think it was one of those weird coconut ones that I was like, ugh, no thanks. So she ended up having three mm. and then was Cut either, off. either playing up the buzz or was pretty buzzed. I mean, she's a small person, so. And you guys were what, like 17? Uh, no, like, yeah, mm, 16 probably? Okay. 16. Yeah. But <laughs> I didn't really drink a lot in high school, so this was like fairly normal for me to not have a lot to drink. It wasn't it wasn't a binge drink fest like you see in the movies. Mm-hmm. This was not super bad. <laughs> what about you? Uh, do you remember any really cringy moments in high school? No, when we drank, we uh, we didn't hold back. <laughs> Okay, so whatever was in, you were like super bad. Whatever like, was in the parents' <laughs> liquor cabinets was going down the hatch, and we would just uh, add water to it. Okay, so they never bought you booze. No. Did you ever get booze from one of your friends' older siblings? No. Oh. No, it was always stolen. Yeah, it was always stolen Jason. from the parents. Stolen? Did <laughs> you guys like replace with vodka water. with water? Wa- oh, that's terrible. Oh yeah, we watered it down. Oh god, for sure. Or if we're gonna notice if our kids do that. No, we're not. Our future children that we don't have. But yes. Chances are 
that their parents just didn't drink every weekend, so they wouldn't yeah. notice until the whole thing was just water. I could have done that. My parents have a fairly extensive liquor cabinet and they don't drink that often. Mm -hmm. It's more there just so that it's there when people come over. They can offer a different variety of drinks. But, oh yeah, I definitely could have done it. I just never did. Yeah. I don't know. Good kid over here, I guess. (laughs) Oh, geez. So, it was was never faking the buzz. It was always very much, I'm super Oh, yeah, I was... Always the one throwing up. Oh, you're still always the one throwing up. (laughs) Yeah, some things never change. (laughs) Bob and Linda return from cake, slightly drunk and happy. At school the next day, Tammy threatens to give Tina's erotic friend fiction to Jimmy Jr. if Tina doesn't do what she says. The foursome skip school and go to the mall where Tina gets a temporary tramp stamp of a T-Rex. Yeah, a little cartoon T-Rex that looks ridiculous. Back at the restaurant, Bob has been changed by cake, and Linda is aggravated with Tina's new attitude. Bob loved cake. He loved it so, so is, much. is cake a kind of a parody of Stomp? I do not know what that is, so maybe. <gasps> the, like, the feet stomping group? I, I understand what feet stomping is. They were yes, just called Stomp. You. Oh, I didn't and, know that there was a group. But yeah. probably, yeah, that okay. makes sense. I just... Thought it was something silly, like, oh, hey, what kind of funny performing arts thing can we have? Oh, patty cake. Yeah. You know. It's like the least show-worthy of the schoolyard sports. Yes, exactly. <laughs> schoolyard sport. It doesn't even qualify. But, yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes sense now. I'm going to have to look up this stomp thing. They're really impressive. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe it was very impressive then, and Bob's just not living up to how great it was. He's not a pro. He's just an amateur caker. And Linda hated it. Well, I don't think she hated it. I she think fell she asleep. just thought it was whatever. She fell asleep. Yeah, but she's not walking around like that was the worst event of my life. I wanted to kill myself. Like That's she true. didn't hate it. I think she just wasn't enthralled. I think she was more annoyed that Bob liked it. Yeah. Because I think she would have been okay to dislike it if Bob had disliked it as much as she did. Oh. But Maybe. since he liked it and she's having to deal with him being all caked up and caked up. in the mood to slap some hands. <laughs> that he's sounded been slapping very things sexual. all day. In the mood to slap some hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Bob and Teddy do some hand slapping. That's true, they do. Bob's just desperate. He'll slap anybody's hands. Yeah. Even those unwilling. Aw. Poor Teddy. Poor Teddy. So this is where Tammy gives our, another of her Tammyisms, the don't be such a boob punch. Mm-hmm. She's the worst. She's just terrible and stuff. So like, she's so mean. And they skip school to go to the mall. Yep. I never skipped school and went to the mall, but a big reason of that was because my high school was super far away from the mall. Yeah, the malls aren't exactly close. No. We would have had to have a car. And most of us didn't have cars yeah. at that point. Um, but some of the stores at the OMG mall mm-hmm. were accurate calendars, fudge and stuff, you've got baggage, which that's cute, hat erosexual. I love that one. <laughs> Socks it to me, Mrs. Cookie Lady, <laughs> <laughs> which is Mrs. Fields, right? And pokey piercings, which is cute. Yep. And the piercing guy is actually reading a MCATS. He's studying. Textbook. Yeah, so yeah. it's kind of nice to see, you know, Bob's Burgers fighting against that stereotype that people with tattoos and piercings can't be smart. Yep. You know? Yeah, heterosexual. Love it. <laughs> that one's weird. I don't know. It's a little too much. So they go see a movie as well. What movie did they go see? They went to see Neverending Gory. Oh, yes, yes, they do. Yeah, the other movies right. at the, the theater were Ninja Nannies. Mr. Sister, and of course, Dog Prom. Friends bad don't girls. like friends, or bad girls don't like... <laughs> like to go to Dog Prom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bad girls don't pay for lip balm. Oh, yeah. Mm-mm, mm-mm. That's not good. <laughs> so I wrote down some of the Tammyisms. Prudabaga. That's good. Trashtastic. Oh, God. And Boot Punch, Crap Attack, Snorgasm. Yeah. 
trash-tastic. That really describes her style. Yeah, that was that was what she said. Jimmy Jr., don't you think Tina looks trash-tastic? Oh, God. Yeah. She, it's, it's very obvious that that's the style that she's trying to go for. Like, she thinks that guys will like her if she dresses in this, like, trashy kind of way. Yeah. Right? Which, it's not great. And then the whole trying to get Tina to get a tongue piercing? No. No, no. No, 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 no. Why? No. What's, because what's tongue piercing? Because tongue piercing? Just, ugh. No. I, I'm imagining myself in this situation where a friend is like trying to blackmail me into getting a tongue piercing, and I'm What's like, wrong I'm with tongue piercings. I can't imagine myself getting one. Oh, okay. Mainly because they have to use a massive needle in your tongue, and that just seems like a horrifying nightmare. So sign me up for that. Never, thank you very much. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> Ugh. No, I don't know. Tongue piercings on other people, that's fine. Do what you want. I don't care. I just don't want anyone to come near me trying to poke a hole through my tongue. No thanks. Okay. Mm -hmm. Why would you have a tongue piercing if you could, Jason? No, they're not exactly a guy thing. They can be a guy thing. Yeah, but I don't think they look good on guys. Oh, okay. So what, is your masculinity saying I can't get one? No, I don't think they look good on guys. Why? Because I don't think they look good on guys. But why? (laughs) There should be a reason, no? No, it's just an opinion. Oh. Oh, okay. It's like, I don't like this color. Why? Because I don't. Hmm. Alrighty. <laughs> I do like Louise and Jean blackmailing Tina, because it kind of reminds me of my childhood. I definitely had moments like this with my brother, where I found out something that he did, or that he was going to do, and then I'd be like, oh, well, if you don't want me to tell mom and dad, then maybe you should do the dishes. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, oh, I there missed was a out. few little moments. I definitely missed out on the sibling blackmail phase. Yeah. And there were moments where he would do stuff like that with me, too. And it was usually something stupid like, oh, I broke something in the house, you know? It wasn't like, oh, I stole a bunch of stuff from a store. Mm-hmm. But yeah, little things. Or like, I killed a guy. Yeah, no, no killing So you better anyone. do the dishes or else I'll tell. No, I could have blackmailed him for a lot more if he'd done that. Exactly. Like two <laughs> weeks of dishes. Two weeks. A month, maybe. Yeah. Depends no, on the guy. A, being an only child kind of restricts your blackmail. Yeah. And it, and then if you do it to a friend, you're just a dick. Yeah. Yeah. Which is what Tammy does, and she's kind of a dick. Oh, big dick. Super dick. Tammy continues to be a terrible influence on Tina, encouraging her to sneak out. Tina is caught by her parents, and she is immediately grounded. Tammy yells at Tina and says she will read her erotic friend fiction to the entire school. Linda encourages Tina to be herself and embrace her artistic side. I think that Bob and Linda are actually really good, like, realistically drawn parents in this episode. Mm -hmm. Because my parents reacted similar to this when either my brother or I did something stupid or broke the rules. It was like, you are grounded. I... I'm very disappointed in you. I can't believe you're acting this way. Like, they would get upset. For sure. So this feels like them. And then also to have Linda be the one who's more upset and Bob to be the one who's just sort of demanding that Tina respect her mother. Mm -hmm. Like, that feels right and in character for them. Yeah. Do you agree? They seem like actual parents aside from me feeling like Linda's much more aggressive in this episode than she normally is. Okay. If you pay attention to only Linda this whole episode, I think you would agree. Interesting. Okay, I'll think about that. Keep that in mind next time I watch the episode. Because I don't think she's that bad. But my mom was also kind of the aggressive type. Like, if someone was going to yell at you, it was going to be my mom. (laughs) And it was going to be loud. (laughs) But then, you know, I feel bad for Tina. Like, we're watching the other side of it, right? Yeah, We exactly. know that Tina's being blackmailed. But if we're seeing it from Linda's perspective, it's just her daughter is suddenly acting really rude and really bizarre. And right. is breaking all these rules. And she has no idea why. So she should figure that there's something going on. If this is completely out of left field. Yes. Yes. But they haven't had a moment to, you know, sit down and have a conversation where she can ask her daughter, you know, what's going on? Yeah. Why are you acting this way? And then I think Tina at this at that point 
if she had tried to have a conversation with her like that, would have just found some way to get out of it. Until this moment where she's like, I'm backed against the wall. I can't say anything else. I have Mm -hmm. to tell them the truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I do feel really bad for Tina in this episode. Her her reputation could be completely ruined if she doesn't do everything (laughs) Tina wants. What? I'm sorry. It just sounds like Tina has a reputation at school. That is okay, in danger she- of being tarnished, <laughs> but it's it's Tina we're talking about. Yeah. She has zero reputation. Ninety percent of the kids at Wagstaff don't even know who she is. They know who she they is. They probably think she's a weird boy wandering around the school. I think people know who <laughs> Tina is. I think like four people, including Zeke, Jimmy Jr., and. I don't know, maybe Andy and Ollie. Yeah, okay, but to not have a reputation or to have a bad reputation, right? Which would you rather have? To be kind of unnoticed or to be known as that weird girl right. Absolutely. who You're writes erotic totally friend fiction? totally correct, because I'd rather people not know who I am than think that I'm the weirdo who writes weird friend fiction. Yes. Erotic friend fiction. Mm-hmm. Weird erotic friend zombie fiction. Yeah. Ugh. But Linda's really sweet with Tina. She gives great advice. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yes she and does. no. I, what she says, the only person who can embarrass you is you. I yes. think that's great advice. True. Uh, I mean, I you think... can't always control that, but it's important to remember that. Yeah. You own yourself. Own everything that you've done. Everything? Like Jean says, oh, God. if you're going to be loud, be proud. That's true. <laughs> That's so Tina should embrace the fact that she's creative and is a writer and artistic. Maybe she shouldn't be sharing this stuff with classmates in school because mm-hmm. that could... It's not appropriate for no, school it's not. environment, it's, no. No, but there's a place on the internet for it. There is. You know what? Go to fanfiction.net. Go to Archive of Our Own. I read fanfiction. I'd love to read Tina's. Why not? I bet you'd want to read her 60-minute friend fiction. Oh, yeah, totally. No, I'm all about that Garfield. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> so I do agree that I I think her mom gives her good advice. Okay. I think her Until mom should have... Until the end. Yes, should have just been like, but don't read it at school. I Please think don't do that. Linda just was so happy that she was trying to give good advice and Tina was receiving it and, like, receptive about mm-hmm. it, that she just kept going and going and and didn't realize that she was telling her to do something that was wildly inappropriate. Yes. And then her hug with Tina is really adorable. She's like, oh, my tiny Tina's back. And then they, they, they hug. Linda's going to be a sweet. wreck when her kids grow up. Oh, God. Yeah. Empty nest syndrome times a million. Oy. She's going to unravel. She's going to start drinking a lot more. <laughs> it's not going to be mommy just having fun anymore. It's mommy getting real hammered. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, that's sad. Okay, I don't want to think about that. Mm-hmm. What do um, you think about going back to Linda coming back from Patty Cake and Louise recognizing that mom is drunk? You think that's a weird thing? Mm, maybe at nine years old is kind of weird. Yeah. I noticed this kind of stuff with my parents when... At that age? No. Um, I noticed that kind of stuff when I was a little bit older, like high school, probably. Mm-hmm. Or maybe, like, the Canadian middle school, you know, like grade 7, 8. Right. Around there. Because sometimes my parents would go out and then my dad might get drunk. Which, he was never, like, a loud drunk. It was more like he was kind of spacey and tired. So now I would know that he lot. was drunk. Yeah. Now he just talks a lot, so I know he's drunk because he just won't shut up. Um, But before, it was like, oh, dad's sleepy, and he's kind of spacey. Like, I'm trying to talk to him, and he's not really responding. Hmm. And I would know he was drunk. I don't think it's bad. I think it probably just means they're comfortable, and Linda's been drunk around Louise before, which... I guess, I I don't know. I don't know why I don't think it's bad. Yeah. I guess I just can't imagine Linda being, like, a bad drunk. More, like, just happy and excitable, maybe. And she's come back from, like, a date with Bob before, right? And she's had a few drinks at at their date. Right. I don't think she sits around with, like, a bottle of wine downing the whole thing and, like, throwing up on Louise. No. So. 
I never had that. So I didn't, I don't know uh, what that's like, like having, recognizing if your parents are drunk. Cause it was just my mom and she didn't really drink. Right. Okay. So yeah, it's like she'd have a beer or a glass of wine, but not excessive. Right. Yeah, no, I can notice when, like, my... Well, I'm sure you've noticed when my dad's drunk oh, yeah, before, for sure. right? You're like, oh, But there now it's is. a little now different because, drunk. you know, we're in our 20s or 30s. <laughs> <laughs> and it's... We're not kids anymore. It's... Yeah. We're adults with your parents. Like, your yeah. parents are no longer parents. They're adults in that situation. Yes, good point. Yeah. So it's it's a little different. It is. But I guess it all depends on context. Yes. Yeah, if... Linda was actually an alcoholic and was violent in some way or aggressive, then it could be Louise very would notice bad. when she's sober. Yes. Which is sad. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, we got to a dark place. Let's uh get out of that. <laughs> yep. There's one great line before we move on that I really like and I repeat all the time with Jean and Louise. Mm. We're belchers. From the womb to the tomb. Perfect and yeah. beautiful. It is great because as soon as they see that Tina's being picked on mm-hmm. or any time any of the siblings are being picked on, the other ones come to the rescue. Yes. They are a team and it's Absolutely. great to see them. They can make fun of each other, but they're not going to stand anybody doing it to them. They have the right to make fun of each other. Yeah. It's exactly. Not a, it's, it's the privilege. It's not a... Yeah. I get it. Oh, I totally get it. I used to be the same way with my brother. Like, if my friends were saying mean things about him, which almost never happened, they usually were telling me that he was attractive and it was gross. <laughs> um, But, <laughs> yeah, if, like, someone was saying mean things about my brother, it was like, what? Defense mode activated, right? You're not allowed to say it. Only I'm allowed. Yeah, but I could call him an idiot if I wanted to. Right. All right, shall we uh, finish up? Yeah. Louise and Jean steal the erotic friend fiction from Tammy. Linda tells Bob about Tina's plan, and they rush to Wagstaff to rescue their daughter before she horribly embarrasses herself. They're too late, entering only after Tina has finished reading her story. But loose. The school laughs at Tina, but the laughter is quickly redirected at Tammy when she loudly farts. Jimmy Jimmy Jr. tells Tina her story was cool, and Bob and Mr. Frond bond over cake. Okay, Bob caking with the ketchup bottles topped with dishwashing gloves is just a great visual. Especially every time one falls over, he gets a little frowny face. Yeah! And He's he, like, oh, this is annoying. And he picks it back up. Yeah, he picks it back up. Well, it's, it's great because it keeps the conversation from getting too static, because really it's just Bob and Linda talking about a conversation we witnessed. Right. So having Bob actually do something Mm -hmm. keeps us entertained yeah Yeah, keeps us from getting bored like we've already heard this we're watching bob yeah be funny yeah and and a little silly yeah i found out that tina's butt loose story is actually a reference to a 1984 super Super bowl Bowl commercial commercial. for apple yeah introducing macintosh computers yeah um well iconic super iconic commercial it's like one of the most well-known commercials of all time i had literally no idea okay i had never seen this commercial in my life really so when i read that it was a reference to that i was like huh (laughs) to what (laughs) okay no it's it's incredible because it was like it was obviously a reference to 1984 Mm -hmm. but it it's great like this lady runs in in her jogging suit and she just She's got a sledgehammer. Yeah. She yeah. smashes the screen and enlightens all these people who are being enslaved by Big Brother. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. And here it's the evil Miss Principal Frond. Yeah. He's principal in this one. She yeah. she just upgraded him. Yep. Yeah. And she enlightens all the students and the classmates and brings color to the world by touching butts. Yep. It's Great. very weird. The outfit is fantastic i yep. love it um she's got that great like 80s pilates looking workout jazzer size outfit yeah. going on uh and the long long flowy hair it's beautiful mm-hmm. and i love the cut screen that we get while she's reading we've got at the top like the actual um events happening right now and then her in the story which is really nice so we get to see the moments Right next to each other. 
Oh yeah, I mm-hmm. it, I almost didn't even notice that because it was done so well. Yeah, I it's just, it's very good. Yeah. What did you think of her story? That's a Tina story. I mean, it's <laughs> it's it was funny. You're not a good. butt. Maybe you're just not a big butt person. As Tina, I don't think anybody is. No, that's true. Tina's way bigger of a butt person. Yeah. Um. Jimmy Jr. bugs me again in this episode because he's laughing at Tina at the end. But, like, he tells her that he likes her story, but he's laughing with everyone. Of course. What a sheep. Yeah. I don't know. Ugh. He doesn't want to be pointed out that he appreciates it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't I like it. I know. Not good enough. Anyway. But Tammy running away and farting is <laughs> gold. It's so funny. I mean, I know Joe... I know fart jokes are funny, but this was even better because it's a girl. <laughs> <laughs> really? That's yeah. Oh, yeah. The reason I liked it so much is because she's so embarrassed, right? And when she gets embarrassed, she farts. Yes. So, so she just ending. kept doing it over and over again. And then she's running away and she's like, oh, no, that wasn't me. Oh, no. Ow, that one hurt. And there's like nobody there. <laughs> so she's doing it to herself. I know. It's perfect. Yeah. It's really embarrassing, but it's just funny. Um, And it, it's not, bit. it's not like she's. I guess I just find it funnier because it's coming out when she's embarrassed and when she's laughing. And I've known people who laugh when they, or who fart when they laugh before. And it is always just a little funny because it's like, it slips out and it surprises (laughs) them, you know? (laughs) And then we get a fun moment of Mr. Frond and Bob actually getting along, which is cute, but also really weird. Very rare. Very rare. Yeah. I think this is one of the only times. And when Mr. Frond says to Bob, oh, you're a patty daddy, that sounded sexual. It sounded extremely sexual. And I was like, how could this be a thing? Maybe caking for some people is like their kink. Anyway, don't want to think about that. I was like paddling, that, but... like, oh, oh, you're like into paddling and yeah. Oh, oh, okay. I see it. It was just funny because Bob was like, no, I don't want to cake and then... He gets, he gets into, into it. it and, yeah. 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 And they're doing the snaps and everything. Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. All right. So overall, are you a fan of this episode? Eh. It's a Tina episode and I'm not really a huge Tina fan. I like okay. it because Tammy is funny mm-hmm. and there's a lot of Zeke in it. And I think Zeke is great. Yeah. <laughs> With his hawking a loogie up in the air oh okay no. catching it mm. and oh yeah and then tina trying it and even just watching that animated makes me nauseous because i <laughs> hate that if you have spit then you don't put it back in your mouth ever at all gross ew uh, yeah it's just a physical reaction i do like bob and caking and i'd give the episode a i don't know like a solid b okay yeah. I'd probably give it like a B plus. Yeah. I like it. It's not a favorite, but it is funny and it is relatable for me at that at that age. Like mm-hmm. trying to impress people, you know, wanting to be a bit different than the person that I am. Right? We all do that as as uh tweenagers, I suppose they call them now. Sure. Mm-hmm. And we do get the introduction of Tammy, which is great because she mm-hmm. becomes a regular. She does. And I do like Tammy as much as she is awful. Oh, yeah. Terrible human being. Still love her. All right. So how many burgers do you have this week? I believe I have two. Okay. I have, I have three. Two. I was going for three, but then I couldn't think of my last one. Mm. All right. Well, I have two. Do you want to give me your first? Sure. My first burger is called Bad to the Bomb. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's supposed to be a play on bad to the bone. No, I get it, but okay. like, what is it? Lip balm burger? Lemon balm. Ah. It's an herb. Oh. Yeah. Oh. And it's almost like a minty flavor. Oh, okay. So you can do a whole bunch of stuff with it, but I figured you could probably just chop it up finely and put it in with the lettuce. Or and, like even mush it up with the patty. Or even just mush yeah, it up yeah. in the patty, yeah. And okay. it could give it a nice minty, zesty flavor. Cool. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. I did not know that was a thing. Yeah. My, you're going to laugh. Actually, you're just going to groan because you're going to be like, oh, really? Uh, my first burger is don't have a snap attack. Snap peas? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was having a hard time with these burgers. Uh-huh. 
But yeah, it would just it would just have snap peas on it. Okay. So. My, I was gonna do don't have a crab attack. Oh, I just have a that's a good crab one. Patty. <laughs> that's cute. What's your second burger? My second one is the Poo Teenage Rebellion. Oh my god. So it's just poutine really? on the burger. Yeah. <laughs> it's literally just poutine on a burger. You don't even say it right. It's poutine po- age. Poutine. Yeah, I know, but that doesn't work with the pun. No, I know. So okay. it's poutine age rebellion. Oh, goodness. Okay. That one's ridiculous, but it's cute. All right. What's your uh, my, second my one? My cheeks are already hurting from smiling. Um, my second one is aquatic friend fiction. <laughs> oh, wow. That one's so bad. That's so bad. I know, right? It's like terrible. It would just be a fish burger. Oh my God. I was trying to think so hard of something that would work with that. Me anyway. too. I had it. I had erotic friend fiction under my list and I just trying to come up with a pun for it. Oh, no. And I, yeah. I could not. Aquatic friend fiction is what I got. Yeah. Let's see what my description for my poutine. Literally a poutine burger. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, alrighty. Well, I was trying to come up with one for friend, so I was thinking of erotic frond fiction. No. It just has, like, fronds in it. What's a frond? Frond? What's a frond? Isn't it, like, uh, the thing in the seas that are, Those like... are prawns! Puh, puh, prawn, yeah, not but, fruh, fruh, fruh. but there's fronds as well. There's, I think they're the squiggly, uh, like, lettuce looking things. What? I think so. Yeah. Pretty sure. Uh okay. What is a frond? <laughs> uh, Mr. Frond. Frond is a leaf or leaf-like part of a palm, fern, or similar plant. Oh. Okay. So a frond is a large divided leaf in both common usage and botanical nomenclature. The nomenclature. The leaves of ferns are referred to as fronds, and some botanists restrict the term to this group. Oh. Other botanists allow the term frond to also apply to large leaves of cycads and palms. Hmm. So probably co- totally could have done erotic frond fiction. Yeah, but Except then... Except I don't yeah, think it's no. edible. Also, it just makes me think of Mr. Frond. Yeah, exactly. And we don't want erotic fiction of Mr. Frond. I mean, maybe somebody does. I don't judge you. But I judge you. No, I'm kidding. Well, your burgers are better than mine this week. Let's just say that. And I would like to just give it for your poutineager. Oh my god, it's gonna be hard to say that. Poutineager rebellion. rebellion. Yeah, poutineage rebellion. That's it. That's our burger this All right, week. I'll take it. Okay. Default. And default. The two greatest words in English language. And it's Canada Day tomorrow when we are recording this. Oh, so, yes. you know, for us to have a poutine burger right now is just patriotic. Yeah. I was trying to think of it, and I was like, nationalist? That's not it. (laughs) Patriotic, I'll take that. Yeah, patriotic. All right, so that's been Burger of the Week, (gasps) a Multiverse Radio production. It was? Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Did Did you miss miss it? it? I did. I DVR'd it, don't worry. You can rewind and listen to it. (laughs) Thank you so much for listening, guys. If you like our show, please leave a rating and a review on iTunes. We'd really appreciate it. And if you have any comments or a punny burger name that you'd like to share... Maybe something patriotic. You can find us on Twitter at Multiverse Radio or Facebook at Multiverse Radio Podcast. And you can also visit our website, multiverseradio.ca. We'll see you next week for our review of the Season 2 finale. That's right. There's not a lot of episodes in Season 2. What? Yep. So the next one is Beef Squatch. Beef Squatch! Oh, goodness. (laughs) Bye. Bye. Okay, hold on. My leg is cramping. But you're wrong! (laughs) Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let's do our... What's this called? Rock, paper, scissors. Alright, so let's rock, paper, scissors. Okay. Rock, Rock, paper, paper, scissors. scissors. And I lose again. Oh, come on! No, I don't (laughs) want you to lose. I want you to have it this week because it's so much better than mine. Let's just do that. You could have just told me. Okay, yeah, I'll just do that then. Alright. Um... So you can just cut that whole part out. Yeah.